OTAN Outreach and Technical Assistance Network Thank you. Hi, everyone. We will be sharing our midterm report for our DLAC project with you, which is to create a Canvas orientation module that has resources that are suitable for our limited and beginning level learners. Um, we are from San Diego College of Continuing Education. I'm Monica Cueva. I teach an intermediate high vessel course in our ESL program, and I'm also our ESL technology coordinator. I'm Jessica Varnado Swall. I'm also an instructor in our ESL program. I teach um, low beginning level, and I have also taught in our online learning, excuse me, online learning classes. We just developed for this last academic year, and I'm also one of the CE online faculty mentors. And I am Alicia Dunan. I am the DSPS um, instructor, adjunct instructor for working on the program. Great, and you might be wondering if you can see us why we have on these hats, <laughs> um, but it's because we have been whipping up a recipe for the last year that we'd like to share with you. And it's our recipe for successful and confident online learners. And we have been mixing all of our essential ingredients that you can see on the screen and working together step-by-step step to make sure that we eventually reach our DLAC goal. And our DLAC goal is to create and collate our ESL and DSPS online orientation resources into a Canvas module that teachers can use in their online hybrid or high flex courses and that can also be used in our student registration and orientation sessions. And we're making sure to put in and invest the time now to make sure that these resources are open and fully accessible to all students. And we will definitely be sharing the module in Canvas Commons when it's ready. And our institution is the largest non-credit institution in California. And we are serving around 40,000 students annually. And we've been around for over 100 years. We have seven, seven different sites throughout San Diego, two of which are located on community college campuses. And pre-pandemic, we also had several off-site locations as well. And we offer classes in many different program areas. And we also have many different certificate programs available through SDCCE. And our institution and individual departments were very supportive and proactive throughout our transition to remote instruction, and they continue to be so today. And because we are part of the community college district, we receive a lot of the, the support that the colleges receive. And we, it also means that we have to adhere to the same requirements and guidelines for online learning and instruction that the colleges do. And so in order for all our faculty to be able to continue teaching online in the fall, they were, we were all required to complete a district online certification program, which is about 20 hours of Canvas training, accessibility, equity, and universal design training. Um, so it's really a very comprehensive program that helps build a foundation for our oncoming online faculty. Um, we are also very fortunate to have a full-time distance education coordinator for continuing education, as well as several online faculty mentors that have been invaluable to our staff and faculty throughout this um, time. And our individual departments also have their own mentoring programs, both formally and informally. For ESL, we continue to have a mentoring program weekly and teachers are able to access a live Google spreadsheet. They can sign up for a time slot, time slot that works for them. And then they can meet um, with a mentor one-on-one -on -one in a 30 minute or one hour Zoom session. 
and we have this available for them weekly just to help with any technology questions that they might have. We have a lot of professional development opportunities. We were able to offer laptop and hotspot distribution to a number of students. And also teachers have the opportunity to check out technology equipment that they might need for online instruction. We also started um, online learning skills classes that um, Jessica is one of the teachers of for our ESL program. And these are offered at the beginning, intermediate and advanced levels. And they help um, teach students and develop the skills necessary to succeed in their online courses. Right now, all of our ESL, most of our courses in CE are only offered online. And we also implemented EL Civics and CASAs assessment um, online for both intermediate and advanced ESL. And our ESL program is rather large. So our current semester enrollment is almost 6,400 students. And we make up almost 40% of CE. We offer, these are the classes that we offer listed here. And pre-pandemic, we also had online and hybrid intermediate and advanced ESL courses that we were teaching and we had been offering online courses since about 2016. So it was really helpful to have those experienced online and hybrid instructors help train and mentor our other faculty as we've been going through this transition. And we introduced two new special topics courses. One is the online learning skills class that I mentioned and the other is a career pathways course which provides um, modules and different pathways for our ESL students to practice, including project management, small business, healthcare careers. Um, I think we also have child development and we have others. And I will pass it over to Alicia to tell us about DSPS. All right. The second, one of the other ingredients for our recipe besides ESL is DSPS. Our current semester, Enrollment is uh, 1,260 students. Uh, a lot of the students, there is a list, learning disability, physical disability, psychological, and also the vis visual and acquired brain injury impairment. Um, and there's a list, the others also. These are some of the classes, these are the classes that we offer with our district, okay? And one of the other things as the other ingredient was our team strength. We really, um, team building with Dr. Porter was really a eye opener for us. We were able to look at all of our, our strengths. And as you can see at the next slide, we'll go over the next one. Our team winning strengths were we are um, a ranger, thank goodness we have an arranger. We're rangers, we're uh, responsible, trustworthy, a trust, trusting that we'll get the job done and that we are learning, always willing to learn, which this whole program has been incredible for us for learning new things. So we appreciate that, thank you. All right. And as with any recipe, you have team support. So part of the team support mixing up, one of our most important one was our, um, each, of our, each of us as team members and then our team coach, Cindy. So we really, um, that was good to have. And we wanna give a special shout out to all of the administrative, uh, administrators who are here with us today. So that was Michelle, our, uh, Vice President, Instructional Services, Michelle Fistall, uh, Dean of ESL, that's Jan. And then we had, I wrote it down, Stephanie Thomas. And uh, I don't know if I'm, I'm sorry if I missed anyone else, <laughs> but we are ex extremely thankful that they are with us. And of course our family and friends. And then we have all our DLACers and online, of course, O10, which this wouldn't, we wouldn't even be here if we didn't apply and get in. So we are so thankful for all the team support. Okay. And it looks like Corinne Layton is also here, our okay. chair of ESL. Thank Thanks you. for coming, Corinne. Thank you. Um, so um, we had a lot of thinking to do to think of what kind of project or goal we could set 
that would benefit both ESL and DSPS and perhaps our whole institution as a whole. And now we're thinking even beyond that, it might be helpful to other institutions. Um, so our idea is to integrate these two departments together for the benefit of the whole. Um, we are very lucky in ESL to have had the time and funding to create a lot of student video tutorials already. Um, so we will be taking those video tut excuse me, tutorials and making more video tutorials for the topics that we either didn't get to before or are now up, um, outdated due to Zoom updates or something like that. Um, and making sure that all of the resources that we include are fully accessible and also adhere to universal design for learning guidelines so that they can meet the needs of all students, but we're particularly focused on meeting the needs of the very low level learners and limited learners because of disability or, or limited English or any other factor. So here's our timeline. I'm sure it looks somewhat similar to the rest of our DLAC cohort. Uh, we started in June with our application for DLAC and we at the time thought we would mostly focus on the goal of accessibility for all learners by helping teachers ensure that their materials for their course were, were fully accessible for all learners. Um, and after starting the DL 101 coursework and kind of dialing into uh, you know, what our institution already excels in and the resources we already have, we realized that we have a lot of materials to prepare maybe intermediate and advanced ESL learners for online learning, but that very beginning level is very challenging to reach. And I know in ESL that our numbers of enrollment have gone down mostly at that beginning level. So we really shifted into wanting to prepare more orientation and preparatory materials for, for our low level and limited learners. Um, and uh, when we presented at TDLS, um, we presented uh, on our video production and learning checklists. Next slide. So at the end of this two years, we hope to have a Canvas orientation module that which uh, will include visual checklists, a student online checklist, um, in the ESL department, um, our learner persistence committee has produced fantastic uh, ESL student guides at both the beginning and intermediate advanced levels. So we plan to include those in our orientation module. We have, like I said, about 50 video tutorials for students new to digital and online learning, but we, we might include a few more. Um, and our district recently came out with netiquette guidelines uh, for our students. Unfortunately, they're written at a little bit too high of a level for our beginning and limited learners. So we would like to simplify them, maybe add more graphics, make them easier to understand for our lower level learners, and then put all of these together, make sure they're accessible and in Canvas Commons for anybody to use and remix and change for their own needs. I, we would like to show you one of the video tutorials that we have already made. Study online. Get ready for your online class. In your online class meeting, sit up straight. Look ready if your video is on. Don't eat or drink. And find a quiet place. Sit up straight. Which picture is the best? One, two, or three? Good job. Number two is the best. He is sitting up straight. Look ready. Which student is ready to turn on their Zoom video for class? One, two, or three? Yes, number three. She is ready to turn on her Zoom video. 
don't eat or drink. Which picture is the best? One, two, or three? Great! Number one is the best. He is not eating or drinking. Let friends and family know it's Zoom time. Which picture is the best for a quiet meeting? One, two, or three? Yes, number two is the best for a quiet meeting. She is in a quiet place. Remember, in your online meeting, sit up straight, look ready, don't eat or drink, and find a quiet place. Now you are ready to have a successful online class meeting. So our next steps are to um, take some of the surveys that we already have and have been using in our registration and placement uh, for, for those needs and perhaps revise them to make them uh, we have these online learning classes already available in our ESL program. And we'd really like to, in the placement procedure, catch those students who would really need these classes. Um, and also survey teachers and students to see what, more, what materials maybe we have not created yet and that would be needed to include in this module. Um, we will analyze the data. Um, and any other anecdotal evidence from teachers or instructional assistants, develop those resources, put them into the Canvas module following all accessibility and universal design for learning, and hopefully publish them to Canvas Commons as part of our final project. So here are our three bakers hard at work to create the perfect recipe for successful online learners.